classes on fundamental civil electrical circuits. We have moved into AC circuits and that to three phase circuits. Again, I repeat, three AC is easy. Moreover, for three phase circuits, it's just an extension of the single phase circuits. Most of the com concepts are similar. So, however, the problems that we will be doing in this session, which is session two in three phase AC circuits, may be a little tougher, but then I'm here to help you. So let's start with the routine of going into the first problem by first viewing the picture. Okay, and when you view the picture, you take in a few uh, take in a few observations as can be seen as as will be related to you. Okay, L right now perhaps you see that uh, the whole circuitry is uh, divided into two parts, wherein we are having on the left side the 400 volt three phase AC source. And the source is feeding the load on the other side. Whatever be the nature of the load, be it star or delta, does not matter in this context because actually what is happening is what is happening in between them. Okay, so we see that there are uh, three, uh, the, there are three watt meters because they are called as W1, W2, W3. They should be watt meters. Moreover, all of them have both current coils and pressure coils. When you see such a configuration, it is best to follow just the current line or just the potential uh, circuit one after another. So if you look at the current line, it, it is obvious that the R, uh, the source, the R phase of the source, fee, uh, source feeds the load through a CT uh, directly inside uh, inserted into the circuit similarly that which is the case for also for b phase and uh, y, y phase and b phase uh, meanwhile uh, uh, so we have covered the, uh, the the current coils of the wattmeters now moving on to the gold the potential coils which are actually connected to the uh, to, to the respective current coils at the left end as it should be uh, so we see that you know, all the wattmeters have the have a potential coil what about the other end of the potential coils they are all connected together at the junction s and it leads to the switch s okay and what is happening at the switch s we have two different uh, configurations to choose from okay if if the switch is placed at s it is obvious that all the potential coils which are collected now in star okay of course you can call them as star of course they are connected together and then they go to the uh, then they go to the neutral okay so what is uh, so what is the context so, so what is the outcome the outcome happens to be that now we have we have a three watt meter picture or in other words the entire power is now going to be measured by w1 w2 and w3 and that to some total is going to give us the total power what about when the switch is connected to y when the switch is connected to y it's obvious that uh, the that the potential coil is connected the potential coil of w1 is connected between r and y okay similarly the potential coil of b phase is or w3 is connected between b and y however the potential coil uh, um, uh, of W2 or uh, uh, which is connected to phase uh, Y, it can be seen that it is more or less shorted. Of course, the, the, what exists across the potential coil happens to be the current coil which has very low impedance or resistance and so we have what is called as a, uh, we have what is called as a 2 watt meter context because R is connected, uh, the potential coil of R is connected to Y. Similarly, the potential coil of B is also connected to Y. Okay. So now we are ready to read the problem. Okay. The load shown in the figure is supplied by a 400 volt line to line. Okay, this is another important statement. Any voltage given for a three phase system is generally the line to line voltage unless otherwise specified. Okay, three phase source R by B and mostly the phase sequences R by B or ABC or 1, 2, 3 as the case may be. Okay, the load is generally, of course, the, there may be certain uh, differences which will be uh, which will be outlined. Okay. The load is uh, balanced and inductive. So balanced load or, or unbalanced load, two watt meter method can measure the power. Okay, and inductive. This is an important statement that the power is inductive. Okay, drawing three thousand four hundred sixty four VA. So the figure is also good three thousand four hundred sixty four. When the switch S is in position N, that is when it's a three watt meter reading uh, context. The three watt meters W one, W two, and W three read. 577.35 watt this is the this is the outcome of a balanced circuit okay so when each of them read uh, uh, 577.35 the total is going to be 3 into 577.35 which is equal to 1732 watts okay if the switch is now moved to position y the readings of the watt meter in in uh, watts will be what okay so now let's uh, let's uh, look at the answers and start thinking about how to do the problem okay so the answers tell us that w1 is 
1732 is 0, 866 and equal to 0 as far as A, B, C, D are concerned. W2 and W2 is equal to 0, it's equal to 1732, W2 is equal to 0 and W2 is equal to 0. Uh, in, in the subsequent cases. Okay. Finally, W3 is 0, 0, 866 is 1732. The first item, the first uh, uh, feature that come, must come to our mind is that W2 has a uh, has a shorter, okay, when the switch is moved to a to position Y, the, the, the W2 has a shorter potential coil or in other words, it measures 0 voltage or, or its reading will be equal to 0 because the reading is given by the wattmeters, uh, the, the current coil uh, quantity multiplied by the potential coil quantity and the angle between them okay of course when you are having a two watt meter method it's different okay so now since we are having a two watt meter method what is going to be the contest it's good so w2 is equal to zero which means that um, uh, that answer b is already away from is already removed from our mind okay so coming to the rest let's look at what is the what what will be the two watt meter meter uh, reading context okay so there are two readings the first one will be given by uh, the voltage Okay, across it, multiplied by the current through it, multiplied by the cos, cosine of 30 plus 5, where, where 5 will be the angle between the voltage and the current. Okay, so, so the, and, the, and the second watt meter will have a V into I into cos 30 minus 5. So, what is V, what is I? Let's see from the vector diagram, which is drawn al alongside. Okay, so now since the, since the uh, RYB phase sequence is followed, we are having VR. Vy and Vb out um, uh, drawn as shown. Okay, since we are having a line to line voltage being measured by the potential coils both um, uh, R Y and B Y, R Y and B Y. Okay, so because um, the, uh, the reading starts from R and reading starts from B and ends at Y. Okay, so we need to have what is called as R Y. That's the reason why Y is now projected backward and becomes minus V Y. So now we can add V R and V Y or minus V Y vector really and so we, so we have what is called as VR by 30 degrees leading the uh, phase uh, phase voltage R. Okay. Similarly, we need to find out VBY which means that VB minus VY or VB plus V min uh, minus VY. Okay. So, we have again VB by, by minus VY again um, at 90 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Okay. Of course, with 30 degrees between both the phase voltages. Okay. So, now we are having and the magnitude is going to be uh, 400 volt because which is already given. Okay. What about the currents IR, IY and IB? The, uh, the phase angle is actually with respect to the uh, phase voltage. So, we are having IR, IY and IB drawn as shown. Okay. So, now it is very clear that if you look at um, W1 which is measuring RY and IR, we are having a case wherein we see that the angle between them is 30 plus 5. Okay. So, so W1 reads uh, V into IV is of course line to line voltage okay, which is 400. Current is of course I. let us see current is IR and then we are having cos 30 plus 5. Okay. So now so I suppose if this is uh, V1 W1 is going to be V1 V I cos 30 plus 5 W2 is going to be V I cos 30 minus 5. So far so good. Now let us go back to some of the uh, so some of the numerical values that we have got the total power is now is equal to 1732 and VA is equal to 3464. What does it mean? 1732 into 2 is equal to 3464 or 3464 into half which is equal to cos 60 okay because cos 60 is half okay. So, the power factor angle because VA into cos 5 it should give you uh, the active power and VA into sin 5 should give you the reactive power. So, we are so we see that 5 is equal to 5 is equal to 60 degrees. So, now if you look back at W1, W1 will be the same as equal to V 400 I, we do not know, but cos 30 plus 5, cos 30 plus 5 is 30 plus 60, cos 90 is equal to 0. So, W1 is 0, W2 is 0. In that case, W3 should me measure the entire power taken by the system, which is equal to 1732. Okay. So, answer D is right. Okay. So, this, so, we make no computations, we just make inferences. This is the understanding that I would like to convey to you while we go through the first problem. Okay, moving on to the problem number two.
here we are having again a, 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 a circuit which looks a little complicated but if you go from left to right solving the understanding of the observations that you make your things will be very much uh, uh, very much easy okay so we see on the left side a three phase source okay and then we see a couple of transformers three of them so it should be a transformer okay couple of uh, coils so it should be a transformer whether, whether they are con connected in star or delta we can see and finally Finally, we have the load. Okay, so it's a three component picture. The source on one side, the, the transformer in the middle because we see all the dotted terminals etc. And then we also have the uh, resistive load connected to the uh, connected to the source. Okay, so it's all R. Okay, so now let's read and, uh, and uh, connect together the dots. Okay, the a balanced positive sequence three phase AC voltage is connected to a balanced star connected a star connected uh, through a star delta transformer is shown in the figure just as we had surmised okay the line to line voltage rating is 230 volts okay line to line voltage okay so now line to line voltage means okay meanwhile it was called as a star delta transformer so let's see if it is a star okay so well, if you look at a small a that's on the on the primary side small a uh, um, uh, the, the a dash is the other end of the coil a dash goes and um, connects to a junction then if you look at b b dash goes and connects to connects to the same junction c goes and c dash uh, c uh, coil c c dash where c dash again goes and connects to the junction okay so def of obviously the primary is connected in star okay if you look at the delta capital a tells us that a a dash a dash connects to b b b dash b dash connects to c c c dash goes back and connects to a so we have a delta there so, so the statement is right okay we can you can always afford some time to check it out okay now moving on to line to line voltage is given as 230 volt on the star side so what does it mean that we are having a uh, we are having a line to line voltage of 230 by root 3 is going to be the because line to line voltage is uh, is available now across a star connection which means that each of the faces in the star will have 230 by root 3 as the voltage across it okay and what about the voltage on the other side okay and 115 voltage on the delta side so 230 by root 3 is the individual voltage across each of the coils forming the transformer on the star side and on the delta side each of these transformers because it is delta is going to have 150 volt directly okay so there is what is called as a transformer ratio which is the same as equal to 230 by root 3 by 115 or 2 by root 3 please remember that okay so this all these things should come to our mind as we go to, as we read the problem okay and now what do we have if the if the magnetizing current is neglected okay of course that's very small moreover it creates problems so we neglect it and is which is the which is at the secondary and that too it is outside of the delta or it's the line current um, what is the value of i uh, what is the value of ip in amperes okay so just a glance at the different uh, ip is the primary current and of course it's the line current and the phase current ha happen to be the same okay so now the answer are 50 angle 30 50 angle minus 30 50 angle root 3 uh, 30 and 200 angle 30 okay so 200 so of these the two answers that are more likely to be correct would be a and b okay because they are they have the same magnitudes only the angles differ okay so now let's have a brief look at the, uh, what, what happens in a delta in a delta as can be seen here if just as a random direction has been taken if ia is come moving in then it splits uh, so it uh, it moves out as iab ib joins it and it, it moves out as ibc and then ic joins it and it moves in uh, it moves back to terminal a as ica okay this is one random direction taken i have taken i i also take the other direction so you can choose this particular direction if this is the case okay then we can say that what is ia ia will be given by okay ia is the same as equal to iab minus ica okay so iab minus ica in the vector diagram that is shown so you just project it back and then you get ia so what is very special about um, currents uh, cu currents in the in the delta configuration is that the phase current is um, lagging the line current by 30 degrees unless in the case of um, uh, the voltages where uh, yeah Okay, it's the same. Okay, so and so in this case, the the, the phase current is lagging the voltage, the line current by um, by um, thirty degrees. Or in other words, we 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 say that 
is is the line current okay then in that case the the phase current will be lagging it by uh, 30 degrees okay so that's point number one okay uh, yeah point number one and then what is the next point okay so let's go to um, uh, let's uh, go to the to the next ve ve vectorial diagram that has been shown which is where we have located is angle zero okay is angle zero is because it is 100 angle zero it's given as equal to 100 angle zero so here we are having is angle zero as uh, on the horizontal okay now let's see what is uh, so this um, the phase current will be lagging the line volt the line current or the delta current i delta by 30 degrees okay and this is the current which is which is actually tuned to the other uh, the, the, that is the, the delta current is going to be what is going to be tuned okay to the current in the other coil which is actually mating each other or linking with each other so we see that i a y that is the current in the star and in phase a only one phase has been shown will be uh, will, will be along uh, along i delta or will have an angle equal to 30 degrees when compared to the horizontal okay so angle 30 is okay so we can actually choose 50 angle 30 directly or Or we can just do the computation wherein 230 Um, uh, by root 3 divided by 120 115 is going to give us the voltage ratio in which case the current ratio will uh, current wherever the voltage is higher the current will be lower or in other words the, the, the current 100 100 um, um, that the, the current is when it is taken to the delta to, to the delta to the inside of the delta it will become is by root 3 okay so is by root 3 has to be now divided by the transformation ratio which is equal to 2 by root 3 okay so we see that the Value is equal to fifty degrees, and the angle of lead is equal to thirty degrees. I hope, uh, though we have uh, spoken about many things, the general concept is clear in the sense that you have to go through several stages. Wherein, if you start off from I S, you step first go to the delta. You go back to the delta. Two conversions need to be considered. One is that then the delta current will be one by root three times of the line current. Okay. Then we go to the fact that the the the, the, the delta current will be leading the uh, line current by 30 degrees okay so that so with these two aspects in our mind the third point that we need to understand is that whenever coils link with each other or mate with each other whatever happens happen to be at the same time phase okay so time phase means the same 30 degrees leading is there but at the same time another important aspect happens to be that the transformer ratio is important in this case the transformer ratio is given by 230 by root 3 because the because the voltages need to match so 230 by root 3 matches with the 150 volt so 230 by root 3 divided by 115 so that gives you the transformer ratio that's the fourth aspect that is if the voltages match the currents match if the and so, so for them to match you have to have 230 by root 3 mating with 150 so 230 by root 3 by 115 happens to be the voltage ratio the current ratio is it's reciprocal so simply now you put all these things together so you see that it is going to be 50 angle 30 degrees okay so now moving on to a third problem okay so again whenever you see such complex pictures you can remember that you will get more marks but and the concept will be simpler in this case you have a little bit of difficulty but let's let's sail along okay uh, you, yeah so what do we have here again if a, a source seems to be obvious on the left side then we are having a load okay each of these loads seem to be of 300 ohms but then we have another load pq Uh, of hundred ohms connected between connected uh, okay could be connected with the switch okay so this is the case and the, the voltage across the uh, line uh, uh, lines happen to be four hundred volt and of course normally the sources are considered to be balanced okay so what what uh, what is asked is of course this was in olden times so they ask uh, for Thevenin's equivalent circuit etc we will go our own way okay determine the RMS value of the voltage across the hundred ohm resistor after the switch is closed in three phase circuit shown okay. So before the switch was closed, it was all balanced because all the resistors were, all the impedances were 300 ohms. Now we have connected a 100 ohm resistor. Okay, so they are all resistors. Seemingly they are all resistors. So a 100 ohm resistor has been connected across 300 ohm. So the entire thing has become unbalanced. And but the but the but the, these resistors being parallel, you can pa pa parallel 100 by uh, uh, with 300, which is 100 into 3 by 4. Okay. I hope you remember. Then we are having a three times multiple of the lower quantity into three by four. Okay, so we have seventy five ohms. Hundred into three by four is equal to seventy five ohms. Okay, so now seventy five ohms, three hundred ohms, and three hundred ohms. This is the situation. Okay, 
So what we have done is that, okay, in this case, okay, we have applied superposition because as I said earlier, it is just an extension of the single phase. So three single phase extensions have been put together here and they have been superimposed because superposition is applicable. Okay, So let's look at the 400 volt being applied. Okay, first, uh, 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 first only by the R phase, okay, while the other two sources are shorted, okay. So, we are having R phase being applied, okay, and 300 and 300 ohms being applied and 300 and 300 ohms being shorted together, okay. So, now we are having a potential divider across R, okay. So, this is an inter interesting interpretation, okay. So, we are having a potential divider across R wherein we are having uh, 75 ohms, okay, and um, uh, we are having two resistors 300 and 300 parallel with respect to each other okay so what do we have here now so, so the 400 volt uh, uh, supply that is there okay multiplied 400 by root 3 because now it's a phase voltage okay 400 by root 3 multiplied by 75 because 75 is the voltage across it's, uh, 75 ohms is the um, uh, resistor um, uh, across 75 ohms is the total resistor that we are supposed to find out the voltage across okay so we are having so 400 into 400 by root 3 again phase voltage multiplied by 75 into uh, divided by 75 plus 150 because 300 300 have been parallel together by virtue of the short uh, available across uh, phase B and phase Y. Why? Because it is superposition. Okay. So, moving on to that, so that's only one component. Okay. But the other voltages are negative in nature. That two phases are connected in the sense that if one is minus 120 degrees, the other is one, the, the, the voltages. Okay. If one is minus 120 degrees, the other is plus 120 degrees and they are uh, pumping power into a similar situation. What's the versus What's the similar situation? Of course, it, the, the two constants, one thing, of course, they are both negative. Second is both values are going to be 400 by root 3. One is going to be minus 120. There is a Y phase because we are following uh, our RVB phase sequence. The other B phase is going to be plus 120 degrees. Regarding the impedances, the impedance structure, we are still finding out the voltage across uh, whatever happens um, uh, across the 75 ohms combination. Okay, So, 75 ohms and uh, 300 ohms are now going to be parallel in both cases because we are having uh, we are shorting uh, we are we are uh, shorting um, the r phase okay so now it's going to be parallel with respect to uh, in the first case uh, with respect to b in the, uh, the the next case with respect to uh, y okay so we see that when uh, when we have 75 ohms parallel to 300 ohms 75 into 4 okay it is 300 so 75 into 4 by 5 gives us uh, an a resistance as equal to 60 ohms okay so in both case you'll see that in the potential divider on the numerator, you are going to get 60 and on the denominator, the other 300 ohms which is free, I have added to this 60, 360. So, now we are having uh, a combination of all three voltages superimposed. So, in all cases, 400 by root 3 is common. But in the, in the first case, uh, angle is 0. In the second case, it is angle is minus 120 degrees which, which is the same as equal to. Uh, both uh, the rectangular components are negative. So, we are having minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.866. In the other case, it's going to be again, uh, uh, when you're talking about a plus 180 degrees, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the imaginary component is positive, the other is going to be negative. So, you sum them all together accordingly and you see that the answer is equal to uh, 400 by root 3 into half. Okay, Everything put together, it's equal to half. So, it's 115.5. It's a simple problem. Though, though Though, though the explanation must have been a little complex okay so next is even much simpler what we have here we are having a uh, a situation wherein there's a source and load as 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 was the case in all the preceding problems and then we are having uh, currents progressing through currents ia ib and ia ib and ibn it looks like a Mm, like a two phase system okay so because we are having a b n and a dash b dash n it should be a two phase system so let's read okay a source is supplying a load through a two phase three wire transmission system as shown in figure the instantaneous voltage and current in phases are v a n 220 that's the maximum value sine 100 pi t volts and current is equal to 10 sine 100 pi t so they are in phase so we can see if you can see, simply multiply both the current and voltages the maximum value divided by root 2 to get the rms value to get the power if that is the situation uh, similarly for phase b the instantaneous voltages and currents are 220 cos so there's a 90 degrees phase difference it doesn't matter um, if the current is also of the same of the same nature and it is so ib is equal to 10 cos 100 pi t okay so again there's another power consumption as given by 220 into 10 divided by 
root 2 and root 2 so it's divided by 2 okay so it, uh, the total instantaneous power now is going to be the sum of the both uh, sum of both so 220 into 10 by 2 plus 220 into 10 by 2 the or in other words 220 into 10 2200 watt okay so this is easily done as also the next problem okay where we are having um, uh, uh, both the star and delta configuration connected to a uh, three phase source with line to line voltages under angle root 3 and there's an ammeter there and we can see that all the all the quantities be they in star or delta okay they are equal okay like for instance z1 is the delta quantity and z2 happen to be the star quantity okay so the the impedances contain star okay so what are they two balanced three phase loads as shown in the figure are connect, are connected to a 100 by root 3 okay so that that root 3 is supposed to be removed because it will give you what is called as the phase voltage okay if required okay so 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 perhaps we have to connect we have to convert to star because star will tell us that 100 by root 3 by root 3 okay so you can get the phase voltage and because it's all uh, balanced you can simply go either uh, to star or to delta for for the combined configuration okay so what we have here three phase 50 hertz main supply given z1 is equal to 18 plus uh, j24 ohms so z1 if you convert it into z1 da dash or, or star it's going to be by 3 so that's equal to 6 plus j uh, j8 z2 it's equal to 6 plus j8 okay so if you want to convert it into delta again you can see that it's the same as equal to multiply by 3 or you have 18 plus 24 j okay so they actually happen to be equal as well okay the ammeter reading in amperes is what is what is r so let's let's uh, use one of the two options so I, in this case I, 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 in the writing i have converted z1 to star so it's 6 plus 8j and 6 plus 8j is now in parallel to each of these 6 plus 8j in star so you are having 3 plus j4 which has a total resistance as a total impedance of 5 3 square plus 4 square square root of that so you have 5 so now we are having 100 by root 3 now can be 100 by root 3 can be divided by root 3 to get the phase quantities so because of the each of these currents is measuring the phase value phase current and phase value, current will be given by 100 by root 3 divided by um, divided by 100 root 3 divided by root 3 and 5 which is equal to uh, 20 amps okay so that's the, the that's the easy way of doing this particular problem okay moving on to uh, again another uh, question where we are having three phase balance supply of 400 volt 50 hertz okay that's the supply part but the but the load looks a little complex because we are having z1 and z uh, z2 two impedances and no impedance between b and c but there is a current coil cc uh, in ac and there is a um, there is a potential coil pc between c and b okay and Z1 is said to be equal to 100 plus J0. So, it's pure resistance. So, also Z2 is also 100 plus J0. So, it's all pure resistance. So, let's see what, what is asked out of us. The figure shows a three-phase delta connected load supplied from a 400 volt 50 hertz three-phase balance source. The pressure coil PC and current coil CC of a watt meter are connected to the load as shown with the coil polarity suitably selected to ensure a positive deflection. Okay. So, if uh, there is any uh, kind of kicking back of one of the coils or the pointer, then you just uh, interchange. Okay, that's the normal pa pa pattern in 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 uh, in the laboratory context. But I'll tell you how why is it so in the subsequent section. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a we have the watt meter measuring whatever it sees. Okay, that's that's the, always the pattern. Okay, so what does it see? It sees a current coil. It, it sees a current flowing through uh, 100 ohms that is z2 and and that uh, that uh, and that uh, and the and the voltage across this is, is going to be 400 volt why because uh, we are seeing that a and c are connected to the source so we are having 400 by 100 that is 4 amps is going to flow through it okay and then uh, the, the potential coil is going to measure the line to line voltage because it's it's b and c okay that's equal to 400 okay and now what is going to be the angle between them for that the, the, the vector diagram may be useful because we are having the as usual the a b c or r y b as shown here and then we also have the general currents laggingly uh, lagging the uh, uh, balance situation is shown just for uh, indication purpose and now we are having what is called as 
uh, the, the we, we are seeing that VBC or V okay that, that is the current is flowing through AC okay so uh, so we need to find out what is AC so AC is reflected back so we have VAC and it is through because it's a resistor it is through which it is through this coil of a voltage VAC through which the current flows okay and that's equal to as as is, uh, as, as was shown earlier VAC 400 divided by 100 which is equal to 4 amps okay so 4 amps flows like this okay and then uh, what is the voltage that it, that it encounters it encounter the potential coil encounters a voltage equal to VBC so C is again reflected back and we have VBC. Again, VBC is at 90 degrees with respect to the horizontal and so and IAC is along VAC that's 30 degrees so we are there with respect to horizontal so the angle between them is 60. Okay, So now we are having 400 multiplied by 4 as the current multiplied by cos 60 because this is going to be the angle between the current coil and the pressure coil which is 60. So it's obviously the answer is very simple and it's equal to 800. Volts, okay? Seventh problem is very simple. What do we have here? We have three resistors R A, R B and R C connected in star across two three terminals A B C. Okay, and consider the star network in figure. The resistance between terminals A and B with C open. Okay, when 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 C is open and and you measure across. Um, yeah, when you measure uh, terminals A and B, C is open and you measure across A and B. Only R A and R uh, only R A and R B fall into the picture. Okay, and when you measure between terminals B and C with A open, then only then you have only R B and R C coming to the picture. R A is doesn't fit there. And similarly, when you measure between C and A, uh, you get uh, B is open. And so okay, so so I think the best thing that to do would be uh, to take the numerical values. That is, you have B plus C as equal to six, and uh, yeah, so you can simply add B plus C in all these cases. Uh, so we see R A plus R B is six. 6, 6, 6, okay, so that's okay. Now let's uh, find out between, yeah, let's find out between, um, yeah, B and C. With A is open, it's 11. So B and C, that is uh, 5 into 7. So that's not right. 3 plus 4, 7, that's also not right. Okay, answer so B is 7 plus 4, that's right. Okay, and that, uh, the, the, the third one is 10 plus 1, 11. So with B and D may be right. So now we go to the last one. What is that? C and A should add to 9 ohms. Okay, so C and A, in the first case, B is right. And in D, we have, we have uh, C and A is 15. So it's not right. Okay, so very simple you can do it okay so so far we have been trying to do preface problems okay the, they might look a little complex but if you follow whatever has been done all through thoroughly i think you will be able to do any three phase problems and they are actually very easy and they uh, give you a lot of marks okay so let me try to uh, coordinate everything in the uh, in, in the in the, the uh, concluding slide thank you